So we're here today at Fiona Bryce's property out here at Mount Burrell. Uh, for this workshop, we're going to be looking at some of the, um, the issues that a lot of uh, beef graziers are having with water management and particularly erosion and landslips. Since Fiona's come out to this property, uh, she's been doing quite a lot of um, cell division and, and putting in new paddocks and re-establishing new fence lines and she's experiencing a, a few landslips and um, yeah, washouts in, in different areas um, and so she's keen to have a chat with some of our local um, advisors. We have Ken Yeoman along from Keyline Designs to uh, talk about some of the ways we can manage water on properties and particularly grazing properties consider the scales of permanence in uh, farm design to ensure that we're managing water and managing erosion and landslips properly. We also have Abigail Jenkins from DPI who has a lot of experience in managing soils and erosion. Um, we also have Melissa Hundy from Water New South Wales who will be talking about the storage of water and, and harvestable rights. My name is Fiona Bryce, Greg Cook, my partner and myself own the property here at 20 O'Brien's Road, Mount Burrell. We've got 250 acres, 100 hectares, and we have approximately 71 uh, breeder cattle, Charbray. Our property here has always been a grazing property. The O'Briens used to own this farm. They had it in their family since the 1920s where they got it by ballot, uh, up until recently when we purchased the property in 2017. Since we've had the property, we've refenced probably at least half of it. We've still got uh, the back section to do. We've put in a uh, water supply as uh, we ran out of water when we had the drought just recently in 2019. When we ran out of water in the drought, we, had a, we were able to get a bore licence. So we've put a bore in. The bore pumps water from down the low side of the farm up a hill into some water tanks and it then gravity feeds the water back down over the farm into water troughs. One of our main goals and objectives was to be able to do uh, de high density rotational grazing. We didn't have the fencing infrastructure to do that in the beginning. We now have Gallagher Western fencing through the property. We still do have some barb and uh, wood, wood post and barb. We also have sea post and barb but primarily the, the central part of the property is electric fenced, which means that we can do strip grazing. Um, we plant some rye over winter for additional feed and strip graze um, a number of the paddocks. It also means that we can split the paddocks in half because now we have the extra water troughs and water stations. Ch do that rotational grazing that we, we, you know, is our main objective. Our main objective with rotational grazing and having smaller areas for the animals to stay in is that that higher density in that smaller area is going to promote good soil health. It means that we can actually rest the other paddocks for a lot longer. So instead of them having a large space of land that they just constantly roam around, by separating them in or segregating them into different areas, then they're going to eat all of the plants in that area rather than just picking and choosing across what they want. But it also allows us to be able to rest that land and so good soil health comes not only from you know, grazing but also from the period of time of resting. Over the last few years we've come across a few hurdles. We've had lack of water from the drought. We've also had that caused low cattle prices at the sale yards. So. It's not so much about the problem that presents itself, but it's about what you do about that problem that presents itself. And with the cattle, when the price of cattle dropped, we decided that we were going to open up and sell our meat direct to the public. And that's been quite, it's really quite rewarding because we get to put quality food on people's tables. And at the same time, we're retaining um, our, you know, our income and the value of our cattle um, and to be able to keep it on farm and to be able to imp improve the farm to be able to keep that food supply coming back into the, into the public and the consumer.
My name is Ken Yeomans. I'm the third son of P.A. Yeomans, who was the originator of Keyline. And um, I came along late in the piece, 16 years after my brother, who has the Yeomans Plough Company. Uh, so I had a lot of training with my father on assessing landscapes, and I also had some experience working with the ploughs on our own property when we were doing the testing of that earlier equipment. So one of the things that my father developed in the, probably about 1958 was the first time it came out in a book. That was the Keyline Scale of Relative Permanence. And it, it gave a, a sequence to the things to consider in terms of property planning and design. So climate, land shape, water, uh, water control, roads, build, um, trees, buildings, subdivision, where to put fencing and soil. Now the goal is of course the deep fertile soil, but the, the framework around that is based on things that are more permanent. And by designing the permanent things that are fixed in terms of what they can do, if there is a dam site and it can provide a supply of water to an irrigation area, that line, even if it's not constructed for 20 years or even the dam for that matter, as long as it's understood, then we don't ruin the potential by planning other things. I did one chap's property years ago and after we assessed it and found a great dam site and we're going to use a saddle for the spillway. And he said, yeah, it's a good thing we did that because I was going to put a hay shed there. And that sort of thing then helps with the getting the planning right. It's just a, a, an order of thinking about things. And uh, Keyline pr provides a way of doing that sequentially and it also expands the ability to find things and not ruin what's there. Okay, so farm planning is a really good way of um, managing uh, soil erosion on your farm in a whole farm way, which is a better way of addressing it rather than having looking at individual erosion sites. If you look at a catchment scale, then you can manage your water flows, you can divert water away from sensitive areas to other areas where they won't cause as much damage, uh, and you can contain areas that are sensitive or problematic areas, whether it be by fencing or other ways. So it's, um, it's a really important tool. Yeah. So ground cover is um, integral for erosion control and especially up here on the north coast where our rainfall is um, often intense and we get a lot of rainfall per year so uh, even though previous research has said that there's a sort of a cutoff point if you're like around 70% where um, below that you get significant soil loss on the north coast it's been suggested that that percentage should really be somewhere around 90% because of the intensity of our rainfalls and, and our soil types being able to soak that up before we get run off. We also want to reduce the amount of chemical that we use on the property. So by increasing the, the rotation of the animals also means that they're moving off the dunged pastures and moving on to fresh pasture, which means if we can keep ahead of ahead of the dung, then we can keep ahead of the flies and the parasites and the worms, which means then we have less problems, you know, coming into summer with, um, with worms and, and, and fly. After spending some time with Ken yesterday and listening to Abby's presentation today, um, those landslip areas that we have on the property, we're going to attempt to um, smooth them out just like Ken's suggestion was. I think planting some trees and some pasture back in those areas to give it some body you know for the soil to yeah to stick um, and definitely fence it off so that the land has time to heal. One of the great things that I learned from holistic management which I probably wouldn't have done if I hadn't have attended that particular course was about on-farm planning. So we have a big map of our property and we have some of that clear sheeted paper that we draw over and we map out where we're going to put our fences and our water points um, and any other infrastructure, roads, laneways, 
um, as I mentioned earlier, the back part of the property still needs to be refenced and we have that all mapped out on, on a plan.